Esme was walking in the forest and got lost. She had been wandering for hours until she came across a witch's house. The witch was busy with a new spell and had a riddle for Esme. If the girl managed to solve it, the witch would let her go. If Esme failed, she'd have to stay with the witch forever. So the witch had six test tubes. The first three were empty, and the last three were full. For the spell, full and empty tubes had to alternate. Esme had to solve this problem, but she could only touch one tube. How can she do it? Esme should take the fifth tube and pour the liquid from it into the second one. A bank was robbed on a Friday evening. There were no customers and no signs of a break-in, which meant it was one of the bank employees. The robbery was discovered by the bank director, Mr. Perry. There were three main suspects, Ms. Cott, Mr. Mendez, and Ms. Morgan. All of them denied being anywhere close to the safe. But one of them lied. Who was it? Pay attention to the footprints. These must belong to Mr. Perry. But there's another pair, which must be heels. Mr. Mendez is wearing sneakers, and Miss Morgan is wearing flats. Miss Cott is the only one wearing heels. The footprints are likely to be hers. So she lied. Mrs. Nichols has four daughters and a son. The oldest daughter's name is April. She's an artist. The second daughter is December. She's into sports. Her third daughter is August, and she's keen on cooking. May is the fourth one, and she likes reading. Their brother Adam is the youngest in the family. How is his name connected to his sister's? The first letters of the girls' names make up the name Adam. Another family riddle for you. Ava is Bella's sister, Bella is Ella's sister, and Ella is Ruby's mother. Who is Ruby for Ava? If Ava is Bella's sister and Bella is Ella's sister, it seems like the three of them are sisters. Since Ruby is Ella's daughter, then both Ava and Bella are Ruby's aunts. So Ruby is Ava's niece. Take a look at these friends at the beach. Which of them is a robot? It must be this girl. Look, it's very hot outside and everyone is sweating, except her. That's kind of odd. The police also broke into three apartments. In one of them, a robot lives. Can you guess where? Look, there's a lot of machine oil in the bathroom. I'll bet it belongs to the robot. What about this photo? Can you spot a robot here? It's summer, and everyone is wearing shorts and tops, except for this guy. He's wearing long pants, a long sleeve shirt, and even gloves. He must be hiding his body. I'd say it's him. Here's a photo of people sitting in a cafe. Can you spot a robot here? It must be this lady, since she's not drinking or eating anything. Guess why? Well, robots can't eat human food, obviously. Another peek into some people's houses. One room belongs to a robot, but which one? It must be this one. Look, there's a whole bunch of bolts and spare parts in the wardrobe. Have a look at this group of friends. Can you tell which of them is a robot?
it must be this guy. There's some steam and sparks coming from it. Perhaps it's a robot that needs some renovations. Aiko has won a game show, and she can finally get her prize. But there's a catch. One last task. There are three boxes, and she can pick one to take with her. One box is filled with $100 bills. Another box contains 5-cent coins. And the last box has both bills and coins. The boxes look exactly the same, and the girl can't touch any of them. The boxes have labels. Bills on the left one, coins in the middle one, and bills and coins on the right one. All the boxes are labeled wrong. Aiko can't look inside any of the boxes, but she can ask for one sample from any box. What should Aiko's strategy be to identify the box filled with bills only? Since all the boxes are labeled wrong, Aiko should ask for a sample from the bills and coins box. If there's a bill there, then that's the one she needs. She should simply take it. If there's a coin, then it's the box with coins. In that case, the remaining boxes contain bills and bills with coins. And since the labels are incorrect, the one with bills is the one marked with the label coins. Belle and Chloe are twins. One year, Belle had her birthday on Friday. Oh, yes. Chloe celebrated her birthday two days later on Sunday. The guests who came to both parties didn't believe that twins could have birthdays two days apart, but the girls showed their IDs and explained everything. So, how is it possible? The twins were born at night. Belle was born right before midnight on February 28th, and Chloe was born right after midnight on March 1st. This year was a leap year, and February 29th came in between these dates. Inoni lives on a farm where she has horses, rabbits, and chickens. Here's what she says about her horses. All of my horses except for two are black. Also, all of them except for two are brown. And all of them except for two are white. How many horses does Inoni have, and what color are they? She has just three horses, one black, one brown, and one white. There was a diversity week at school, and one of the students was robbed. Detective Callum interrogated three main suspects. Eliza said she'd been working in the cafeteria the whole time. Asher pointed at one of the flags and said he'd been fixing it since it had been hanging upside down. Hmm. Naya said that the student who had been robbed was her best friend, so she never would have done that. Who is guilty? Asher, the flag that was supposed to be hanging upside down is actually symmetrical. On a rainy day in the summer, a house in a small neighborhood was robbed while the owners were away. The police came to interrogate four neighbors. Everyone said that it had been raining. They'd been at home all day, eating and watching movies. Take a look at the houses. Who is lying? Reed is lying. Look, the ground under his car is wet which means he arrived after it had started raining. So he did leave his house. Miss Virginia Dell was a rich gentleman's daughter. She was staying at her hotel room when a security guard called her. He told her to run away since the criminal was going up to her room. Miss Dell ran to the elevators, but in each of them, there was a man. Which elevator is safe for her to use? The criminal obviously came from the first floor, and since this man is going down, it must be safe to go with him. Really? Dakota woke up in a dungeon. She couldn't remember what had happened. After wandering around for a while, she found out it was a vampire's castle guarded by the creature himself. Also, she found three chests. One of them was full of gold coins. Another was filled with silver coins. And the third chest was full of diamonds. Dakota could take any chest with her, but she wouldn't be able to get past the vampire anyways. What should the girl do? (laughs) 
Dakota should take the chest with silver coins. Vampires are afraid of silver, so she'll be able to walk past him. Amelia is participating in a game show, and here is her last task. If she completes it, she'll win. She has cubes with these numbers. She should use three of them so that the sum total is equal to 30. Which ones should Amelia use? She should turn the cube with 9 over to get 6, and then use it along with 11 and 13. Sienna must leave the house in exactly 9 minutes. The power is off and her cell phone battery is flat. Sienna has two hourglasses. One measures 7 minutes and the other measures 4 minutes. How can she use them to measure exactly 9 minutes? Sienna should start both hourglasses at the same time. When the 4-minute hourglass runs out, she should start it again. 4 minutes will pass. When the 7 minutes hourglass runs out a bit later, she should start it again. It'll be 7 minutes. The 4-minute hourglass will run for one more minute together with the 7-minute one. When it runs out of sand, it'll be 8 minutes. Sienna should then flip over the 7-minute hourglass. It'll have sand in its top part for exactly 1 minute. Now, I'll be showing you some images, and your task is to find out what's wrong with them. Ready? Here's the first one. What do you think? This car has no steering wheel. Easy. What about this picture? Can you notice anything odd about it? The reflection in the mirror is different from reality. Huh. What about this picture? What's really off here? These people are playing soccer, but they're playing it with a basketball. What about this picture? Do you see any mistakes here? People are in open space, but they're not wearing spacesuits. They wouldn't be able to breathe without them. Some people went on a hot air balloon trip. Can you see what's wrong here? This is definitely not a hot air balloon. Take a very close look at this picture and try to find a mistake. Can you see it? Look, the door hinges are on the wrong side of the door. Diana buys a chocolate cake and leaves it on the table in the food court to go buy some drinks. Then she comes back and sees that the cake is gone. She questions three people standing nearby. Henry says, I didn't do it, I'm on a sugar-free diet. Miss Green replies, I'm allergic, young lady. I haven't been eating chocolate for 30 years now. And Kelly says, I'm sorry, but when I came over, this table was empty, so I occupied it. I didn't see any cakes. Who's lying? Miss Green lied about her allergy. She's drinking hot chocolate at this very moment. This evening, Mike plans to go to the movies with his friends, Mia, Dan, and Crystal. He buys a huge box of popcorn at the festival. Then, Mike puts it on the table and tells everyone. The film is about to start in 15 minutes. I have the time to go to the bathroom. Wait here and don't eat the popcorn until the movie starts. In a couple of minutes, Mike comes back and sees that the popcorn box is half empty. Mia says, it was Crystal. Dan replies, she's lying. And Crystal says, Dan is lying. Can you figure out who ate the popcorn? Dan. He's the only one who has popcorn crumbs on his cheek. Meanwhile, Jennifer is drinking her tea alone on the opposite side of the food court. 
Suddenly, she gets a business call and goes outside to answer, leaving her glass on the table. A minute later, Jennifer comes back and gets very upset. Someone drank all the tea from her glass. There are three people standing next to the table. Can you figure out who's guilty? This woman in the middle, she left a mark of her purple lipstick on the cup. Can you spot a left-handed person among these five people? It's the barista. She's holding a tray with her right hand in a static position. Meanwhile, she's serving the drinks with her left hand, so she's most likely the left-handed person. Marta is making a fruit drink. The recipe comprises 90% of liquid and 10% of solid fruit mix. The total weight of the mixture is 20 pounds. After boiling the drink for a while, Marta notices that the liquid starts to evaporate. Now, the liquid comprises just 50% of the total weight. What's the weight of the drink now? Initially, the liquid occupied 90% of the overall mix, which is 18 pounds. And the weight of the solid was 2 pounds. Earlier, the solid contributed 10% and now it's contributing 50% of the overall weight, but its weight is still 2 pounds. Therefore, since the liquid is now contributing 50%, its weight should also be 2 pounds. So the overall weight of Marta's fruit drink is 4 pounds. Diana, Frank, and Quentin cook pasta. They start boiling water in three identical pots at the same time, but Frank's water gets boiled first. Can you figure out why? He's the only one who closed the lid. And finally, let's take a look inside the food warehouse. Do you see anything weird? The cabbage has eyes. Betty got a job as a cashier at a movie theater. A group of her first customers approached the ticket kiosk. Four mothers, two grandmothers, and four daughters. What's the minimum number of tickets they need to buy? Only six. Betty has three keys that open three different doors. How many attempts does she need to figure out the key for each door? Betty will need six attempts. First, she has to check the first key and spend three attempts for three doors. Then, check the second key, two attempts for the remaining two doors. And then, use the third key to open the last door. Betty enters the cafeteria and spots a thief right away. Can you see this person too? This elegant lady in the chair has a plastic detector attached to the stolen clothes. Someone robbed the movie theater. Betty calls the police and they arrest three suspects. Officers check the guy's passports. Can you spot a fake ID? Most passport pictures have a white background so the one in the middle is fake. Late at night, Betty is walking home in a snowstorm. She meets her neighbor walking a dog in the street and freaks out. Can you guess why? The dog leaves footprints from only two paws. Betty continues her walk and sees another odd thing. Can you spot it too?
It should be the moon, not Saturn. Betty enters her apartment building and meets three neighbors in the elevator. One of them is a werewolf. Can you guess who? This lady on the left. She's wearing a moon necklace. Betty goes to sleep and wakes up in an arena. The speakers announce that she must fight with one of these three hybrid creatures. Which one should she choose to stay alive? A polar bear with the head of a tiger, an elephant with a wolf head, or a hybrid with a face and body of a huge squid and the legs of a human? Betty should choose the third hybrid. Since its body has gills, it won't be able to breathe and fight outside water. After the fight, Betty gets an invitation to meet the major investor of this competition, King Harold. She enters a big, beautiful hall and sees six people sitting in front of her. They're wearing the same outfit and look very similar. It's very hard to tell who's the real king here. But after a couple of minutes, Betty approaches one of them, bows and says, Nice to meet you, your majesty. How did she know who's the real king? All the other guys were looking at the king very attentively to imitate his manners and actions. Meanwhile, the real king, Harold, was sitting calmly. Betty returns home and faces bad news. Her cat, Fluffy, is missing. Betty questions her neighbors. Lily says, Sorry, I didn't see any cats. I'm working from home. I spent all day working on my new book. Vanessa said, I haven't seen Fluffy today, and it's cool because I have a terrible allergy to cats. And Bob said, I think I heard a cat meowing on the balcony a couple of hours ago. Can you guess who stole the cat? Nobody. Fluffy's been hiding under Betty's couch all this time. Betty's boyfriend, Stan, lives just a couple of blocks away from her place. Betty calls him on FaceTime and invites him over. But Stan says, Sorry, honey. I've just got home feeling very sick. I'd rather go to bed early. Betty yelled, Liar! And hung up. Why? Take a look at Betty's window. It's pretty dark. Stan lives only two blocks away, but there's a bright blue sky in his background, which means he's definitely not at home. Betty makes a beautiful sandcastle and then lies down. She falls asleep. In a while, Betty wakes up and sees that someone has ruined her castle. She asks three persons hanging out nearby. Who did it? Kelly replies, I like your castle and took a couple of pictures for my social. Then I left to get some ice cream. When I came back, I saw the castle was completely ruined. Olivia said, I'm sorry, I was swimming far from the shore. When I returned to the shore, I didn't notice any castles. And Tom said, Sorry, lady, I don't see anything because I'm blind. The wind must have destroyed your castle. You shouldn't have to make it five stories high. Can you spot a liar? Tom is lying. He said he was blind. How did he learn the castle architecture in detail? Onda found three root vegetables in the garden, but only one of them was mandragora. Can you figure out which veggie Rhonda should pick? Even if you've never seen a mandrake, you can eliminate the other plants. This is definitely a carrot, and this is a beet. So the remaining one must be the mandragora. Lucy and Rhonda prepared to leave the spooky house, but suddenly they stepped on a trap hidden in the grass and fell into a deep well. They looked around and found three tunnels leading to freedom. A fire-breathing dragon was waiting in the first tunnel. It was very angry and disliked people. There was a portal leading into a black hole in the second tunnel, and huge cacti were growing all over the third tunnel. 
Their juice was poisonous to any human. Which way should Lucy and Rhonda choose? The third one. Look, those cacti don't have any spines. And no one's gonna force the girls to drink cactus juice. Vera cooked the potion for Joy. Lucy and Rhonda took it to the girl's house. But when they entered her room, it was empty. Joy's parents said that Lily and Joy had left together. They were both acting very weird. Rhonda said, Oh no, they've both turned into vampires. We've got to find them before it's too late. Can you help them find any clues in Joy's room? Look at her laptop. They seem to have bought train tickets to go to Las Vegas to visit Joy's granny. Lucy and Rhonda boarded the train. Besides them, there were four other people in the car. One of these passengers didn't have a ticket. Can you figure out who it is? This woman. She's the only one who's hiding her head behind the headrest of her seat so that the camera doesn't spot her. When the train was going through a tunnel, the lights went out and the passengers got very frightened. When the light turned on again, one of the passengers shouted, Help me! Someone has stolen my bag! Lucy immediately realized who had done this. What about you? Any ideas? Yeah, this guy. There's some makeup lying under his seat, and his window is open. He put the contents of the bag into his backpack, and then threw the bag out the window. Rhonda and Lucy got to Las Vegas, and headed for the house where Joy's granny lived. But they kept coming to the wrong houses. In the first house, they met this old lady, and in the second, there was this one. Can you tell which elderly woman is dangerous? It's the second one. She's up to something, while the first one is just getting ready for a Halloween party. Finally, Lucy and Rhonda found the right house. The door was open. When they entered, they saw Joy's granny unconscious on the floor. She had a vampire bite on her neck. Suddenly, Joy and Lily popped out of nowhere. They had pale faces, sharp teeth, and pointy ears. They came closer and closer, ready to bite their friends. Suddenly, Rhonda began laughing and exclaimed, huh, Stop fooling around, it's just a prank! How did she know? The mirror reflects Joy, and Lily casts a shadow. They're not real vampires, it's just a Halloween prank. Joy went to take a shower to remove her vampire makeup. But someone poured paint into the shower head, and the water turned green. Joy questioned Lucy, Rhonda, and Lily. Lucy said, I did my laundry and then went to cook some kiwi jam. Sorry, I gotta go, it might burn. Lily said, I took a shower and washed my hair right before you went in. What happened? Why are you so green? And Rhonda said, I'm studying for my geometry test. Can you keep it down, please? Who pranked Joy? Lily said she'd just washed her hair, but it's dry and braided. Besides, she's wearing a dress under her bathrobe. That's a pretty suspicious outfit. Rhonda decided to prank Lily. She took a balloon and a cupcake paper cup. She filled the balloon with some water and put it into the paper cup. Then she added some shaving cream on top and decorated it all with sprinkles. Now it looked exactly like a real cupcake. Rhonda was very proud of herself. Suddenly, she heard other girls entering the kitchen. Rhonda left her cupcake on a plate, along with real cupcakes, and hid under the table. Lily, Lucy, and Joy entered the kitchen, saw the cupcakes, and decided to eat them. Can you tell who took the prank cupcake? Joy, the real cream has already melted. 
but the shaving cream still looks perfect. Gerald is a college dean. Somebody stole his car this morning. Soon the police found it across the street. The thief hit a pole and escaped. The police interviewed three suspects. Holly said, I was busy having classes all morning. Then I went for a walk with my friends. Brian said, I was checking the test papers. Rob said, I skipped classes and spent the day at my girlfriend's studio. Can you guess who stole the car? It was Holly. Take a closer look inside the car. She lost one of her earrings. The combined age of Jenny and Jasmine is 49 years old. Jenny is twice as old as Jasmine was when Jenny was as old as Jasmine is now. How old are the sisters? Jenny is 28 and Jasmine is 21. Lisa likes grapes, but not potatoes. She likes squash, but not lettuce. Also, she likes peas, but not onions. Following the same rule, will she like pumpkins or apples? Pumpkins. Because Lisa only prefers things that grow on vines. Which of the following words don't belong to this group and why? Quartz. All the other words are anagrams of each other. Two people participated in a contest. They had to hold something. Finally, the jury announced the winner. It was a person with their hands and feet tied. How can this be possible? It's all simple. The contestants had to hold their breath, and the tied person managed to hold it the longest. Becky is thinking about a seven-letter word that we read very often. Letters 5, 6, and 7 grow every year. Letters 3 and 4 are the same. Letters 3, 2, and 5 cover over 70% of the world. What word is Becky thinking of? The correct answer is message. Our age grows every year, and the C covers over 70% of the planet. Amy is looking at Nick, and Nick is looking at Mia. Amy is married, and Mia is not. Is a married person looking at the unmarried person? Will you go with a yes or a no? Or is this information insufficient? The correct answer is yes. Two combinations are possible here. If Nick is married, Mia, who is unmarried, is looking at him, who is married. If Nick is unmarried, we still have Amy, who is married. In this case, she's looking at Nick, who is single, which meets the requirements too. Five friends were eating apples. Amy finished before Bob, but after Kat. Dan finished before Eve, but after Bob. Can you figure out the exact order in which they finished the apples? Cat, Amy, Bob, Dan, and Eve. Eric's job is to guard a supermarket parking lot. One day, he was walking around the area as usual and noticed that someone had parked the car in the middle of the driveway. He questioned four women. Ladies, who is the owner of this car? All four women replied, it's not my car. Eric took a closer look at the vehicle and figured out its owner right away. Can you guess which of these women is the owner of the car? It's the first lady. She's the only person who's not wearing a bag. Her bag is in the car. Peter came home in the evening and found his car wrecked. His three roommates were there. 
Peter decided to find out who was guilty, so he questioned them. Josh replied, I didn't touch your car, I was walking the dog. Mike said, that wasn't me, I was playing football with my friend. And Will said, "Mm, nothing special happened today, I was just hanging out with our neighbors. Can you spot the liar? It's Will. He said he'd visited the neighbors, but nobody lives in this abandoned house. Plus, his cheek looks like he was in a crash. To find treasures, Vicky has to unlock the final door. She needs to push one of these four buttons. But she only has one chance. What would you suggest? Vicky has to choose the red button. The symbols on the door are hints. Each of the four products can be red colored. After all the adventures, Vicky is finally having lunch. Can you spot anything odd here? Hello! Vicky gets a bed in a dormitory room. She will share it with four other contestants. Vicky drops her backpack on the bed and goes to the toilet. In a few minutes, she returns and finds out that someone had stolen her phone. Vicky questions all her roommates. Sam says, I had a meeting in the lobby. My friend can confirm that. Fiona says, I was washing my hair in the shower, so I didn't see or hear anything. Diana says, I spent the last 20 minutes at the laundromat. I came back just now. And Mia says, Sorry, I was doing exercises on the balcony, so I didn't watch your stuff. Who's lying? Fiona. She said she had just washed her hair, but her curls are dry. The Greens housemaid Stacy forgets to close the window at night. In the morning, she finds out that some valuables had been stolen. Stacy calls the police. The detective checks the crime scene and puts together a list of all stolen items. Take a look at the picture. Can you tell what was stolen? The candlestick, music box, and vase. The detective interviews the Green's neighbors. He asks, did you see anything suspicious last night? Maya replies, yes, I saw a man in a black hat. Hmm. Peter says, I saw a suspicious woman with a big box by the Green's house. Hmm. Liam says, I saw someone dressed as a dragon and another guy with a hiking backpack. And Will says, I saw a strange masked man near the house 20 minutes after the Green's went to bed. Hmm. Who seems suspicious? Will, how did he know when the family went to bed? Bob's parents are going on vacation for two weeks and leave him alone. Yeah. His father says, Bobby, be very careful. No parties at home. But Bob throws parties almost every night. One night, his friends notice a car and yell, Looks like your dad's car is here, bro! All the guests clean up the mess as quickly as they can and hide. Parents arrive early and realize that Bob had a party. How? There are four joysticks and a pizza slice under the sofa. Spelled forwards, it's what you do every day. Spelled backwards, it's something you hate. Can you guess this word? The correct answer is live. This is Mary. All her hats are white except two. Also, all her hats are red except two. And all her hats are black except two. How many hats does Mary have? Just three, one of each color. Kate enters the local supermarket to get some fruits. There's an intelligent glass pane installed in the fridge. This glass pane allows cherries and apples to pass through. At the same time, it keeps grapes and melons inside. Can you figure out which rule the glass pane is following? The glass pane only allows the fruits with double letters in their names to pass through. 
Can you spot anything odd in this picture? Too cool for winter. Kelly visits her bestie, Sarah, but Sarah is crying. <laughs> Kelly asks, what happened? Sarah doesn't say anything. She just shows Kelly a phone chat with her boyfriend. Can you tell what made Sarah so upset? He lied to Sarah about his dog's illness to hang out elsewhere. Take a look at the reflection in his sunglasses. Seems like he's chilling at the beach. Billy enters a dining room. Right away, he spots that someone had prepared a prank. What about you? Oh. This chair only has three legs. Lily gets a job as a flight attendant. This is her first flight from Hawaii to Mexico City. She's greeting the guests in the aircraft, but three passengers on the flight are not humans. Can you spot who? Uh. This lady doesn't cast a shadow, therefore she's not a real human. And this one is dressed up too warmly for the hot weather. The guy over here is drinking a weird green liquid with bugs, which is kinda cringy for real human beings. Okay, bad news. You got taken. No time to explain. Let's just get out of here. So you find yourself in a dark cell with a dirt floor and a small window at twice your height. There's no food or water, but there's a shovel. Why did they leave the shovel? Don't ask me, I don't know. Just be happy you have it. <laughs> However, you can't dig your way out because the walls go a long way underground. So how do you get out? You can still dig and make a high dirt pile that will make you reach the window and get out of there. So you do just that and find yourself in a dark corridor. You have nothing to do but to go straight, hoping that sooner or later you'll find the exit and get out of this creepy place. Half an hour later, you approach a metal door. You have to enter the passcode, but here's a hint. Berlin, 600. Paris, 400. London, 600. Rome, 200. Toronto, hmm, what's the passcode? Each consonant in the word gives 200 points, while each vowel takes away 100 points. In the word Toronto, there are four consonants that give 800 together. Three vowels take away 300 points. So the passcode is 500. The door clicks and you leave another obstacle behind. Soon, you approach three more doors. Behind the first one, there's an iron block with a movement sensor that will crush everyone who enters. Behind the second door, there's an electric shocker that never misses. Behind the third door, there's broken glass all over the floor. Which way do you choose? You pick the third door, obviously. You're wearing some boots, right? So walking on the glass is definitely not going to be too hard of a task. You follow the tunnel till you reach the next room. As you step in there, a metal cage falls down from the ceiling and traps you inside. However, there are three buttons there. The red button will open the cage, but it'll also open a door with a hungry lion. The blue button will fill the cage with water for 10 minutes, and only then will it open the door. However, keep in mind that people can only live 7 minutes without oxygen. The green button will set the room on fire, but will open the cage door in 5 minutes. Which one do you choose? You should choose the blue button. The water won't be able to fill the cage because it will just splash outside. You'll only have to wait 10 minutes until the door opens, and you'll be able to get out safely. You turn right and immediately bump into a huge guard. Your heart skips a beat and you get paralyzed with fear. To your surprise, the guard looks down at you and asks, Wanna pass? Speechless, you just nod. Okay. You see, 
No one here wants to play riddles with me. If you solve one of my riddles, I'll let you go and won't tell anyone I've seen you. Deal? You nod again, and here comes your riddle. What is that invention that lets you see right through walls? That's a window, of course. The guard smiles and says, Beware of the vampires. Then he moves aside, letting you go. Wow, that was close. And vampires? This gives you chills. But you have to keep moving and get out. And again, another door that requires a passcode. Can you crack it? There's a hint again. You should continue the sequence. O-T-T-F-F-S-S-E-N-T Each of these letters is the first letter of the numbers. O for 1, T for 2, T for 3, then 4, 5, and so on. The last stands for 10, so the next four are E, T, T, F. 11, 12, 13, and 14. Yep, that's correct. The door clicks open. Move! You get into a huge dark room. All the light comes from the candles the room is filled with. The problem is that there are four ways, and again, you don't know which one to take. Suddenly, each of the doors opens and four people walk into the room. There are two men, one woman, and one teenage girl. They all say they're prisoners too, and the other three are vampires. Who do you trust? You should trust the second man. He's the only one who casts a shadow from the light of the candles. The other three don't, so they must be vampires. So you rush to the man and you shut the door behind yourself. It'll probably slow them down for a while. As you're running, the man tells you he's been here for at least three days. The next obstacle is something he couldn't solve by himself, so he couldn't get out. There's just one try, and if you fail, the exit gets blocked for 24 hours. Finally, you come across another door with a robot guarding it. To let you go, the robot needs you to say the password. The tricky thing is that the password is different each time. The man said that as he was hiding in the room, he saw the vampires passing it twice. The first time, the robot said 12, and the vampire said 6. The other time, the robot said 6, and the vampire said 3. When the man approached the robot the last time, the robot said 8. The man replied 4, but the robot didn't let him in. The door got blocked, so it wasn't the right answer. You nod and approach the robot. The robot says 4. What is your answer? The answer is 4. The rule isn't dividing the number by 2 but saying the number of letters in the word. Your answer is accepted. The robot opens the door and lets you go. Again, another dark room. But as you step into it, you get surrounded by eight hungry dogs. In the middle, there's a meat cake standing so high on the table that the dogs can't reach it. To calm them down and make them your friends before they make you their dinner, you have to feed them the cake. But here's a tricky thing. The knife is magical and can only make three cuts. After three cuts, it disappears. Your task is to divide the cake into eight equal pieces with these three cuts. How can you manage that? With one cut, you cut the cake in half and get two pieces. Then you make another perpendicular cut and get four pieces. With your last move, you have to cut the cake in the middle horizontally, splitting each of the four pieces into two at once. (laughs) Great job! Now, give each of the dogs a piece of cake and get out of there immediately. You rush to the door and lock it behind yourselves. You're in a tunnel again, and this time there's no light at all. You move in complete darkness putting your hand to the wall so that you know where to go. You walk like that for at least half an hour when, finally, you see some light. 
You run towards it and come across another massive door that requires a passcode. Luckily, there's a hint again. But there will be two questions appearing one by one. To get the passcode, you have to solve both of them and put the answers together. Ready? How many months have 28 days? All 12 of them, obviously. Okay, next one. Here's the sequence of letters. S, M, H, D, W. What are the other two letters? S stands for seconds, M for minutes, H for hours, D is for days, W is for weeks. So the next letters are M for months and Y for years. And the full passcode is 12MW. The door clicks and you're outside. Finally! There's actual air and sun. But before you start thinking about what happened and what to do next, a police officer comes up to you. With him, there are two ladies wearing paper bags over their heads. Sir, are you Mr. Jones? The police officer asks. You reply, that's you exactly. However, the police officer looks suspicious. Well, we can't know for sure that you're not one of these criminals pretending to be someone else, so we have to test you. One of these ladies is your bride. Tell us which one it is. And now, you finally remember what happened. It was your wedding morning. You were about to get married, and then you found yourself in that dungeon. Well, the problem is that you haven't seen your wife-to-be wedding dress yet, so you can't even tell which one is the right one. Is there any other way to tell? Think carefully. With their faces covered, these girls are absolutely identical. You didn't need much time. You notice that one of the girls is wearing a wedding ring already. However, you and your bride aren't married yet, so she's not supposed to have one. And the one who doesn't have it is yours. Congratulations! The girl removes the bag, and you see that it's really her. Right behind you, the door opens, and the vampires walk out. You're about to start screaming, but they take off their wigs, and they turn out to be your friends. So, was it all a prank? Well, yeah, it was. But don't be mad. You had fun, right? Well, most of the time.